Welcome to the second tutorial for Photoshop from chrislanephoto.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the Marquee Tool. The Marquee Tool is the second tool in the toolbar here. Holding my mouse button over it, you can see that the keyboard shortcut is M. You see this little arrow here in the bottom of the button? If you click and hold, it'll show out a sub-menu that shows all of the tools that are actually underneath that. And on the side here, you can see that they both have an M, the first two. If you hold down the Shift key and the M button, it'll shift between those first two tools. Right now I'll be talking about the rectangular marquee and I'll get to the other ones in a little bit. So the basic function of the marquee tool is you just click and drag to make a rectangular selection. And it'll select whatever is on the layer you currently are on. Right now you can see that I have just a flattened image, just a background. If you have a vector layer, such as with the pen tool, It'll actually select the entire thing. It won't select a section of the vector. But with a bitmap image, such as a photograph, it'll select whatever is within these dotted lines. So some further functions with the marquee tool here. If I just click, it'll make this selection go away. Another way to make it go away is hold down Control and hit D for deselect. Now if I hold down the Shift key and click and drag, it'll constrain it to a square. Make that go away. If you hold down the Alt key and click and drag, it'll go from the center. And if I hold both of those two, Shift and Alt, it'll go from the center constrained as a square. One thing with this rectangular marquee is that you can't rotate. It'll always be a flattened horizontal rectangle. If you start a selection in wrong spot where you were, if you hold down the spacebar key, while you still have the left mouse button, you can move the entire thing to where you want it to be and then still let go of the space and then you can still adjust the size of your square here. To add to the selection, hold down your shift key and you see you get a little plus sign next to the cursor. Just click and drag and it'll add another section. And you can do this anywhere on the image. If you want to remove a chunk, hold down the alt key and you'll get a minus sign and then you can take out any portion that you want. If you hold down Shift and Alt, it'll do an intersect. And what that does is it'll take a combination between the two spots that you selected. So you can see what's inside this larger square rectangle here will be what's selected. These buttons at the top do the same thing. So the first one is your basic. Next one is Add to, Subtract from, and Intersect. So once you have something selected, say a box around this little piece on the wall here and you realize that's not where you actually want to be just with this white arrow just click and drag and you can move the box to wherever you want it and you can do that as many times as you want if you want to move say this square on the wall to another portion you can either go to the move tool and you see the little scissors there it'll cut it out and put whatever your background color is in its place and then move it to another portion. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Alternatively, you can hold down the control key while still on the marquee tool and it'll do the exact same thing. One thing, once you have moved this away from its original position, you can't actually move the selection box anymore. It'll always have this black arrow so where you can actually move the what's in the selection. Now if I've got a portion selected like that and I want to work on it but I don't want this outline you can hit control H and it'll make it go away to show what this actually does I'll hit control H to make it come back and I'll give an example of what you can do within the selection box what the marquee tool is actually used for so if I switch over to my brush tool it'll constrain your drawing within that box for something like that so now if I control H to make that go away, I can see what it looks like. And I can still work within these constraints like this. There you can see that. So control H to make that come back. And I'll just control Alt Z to make it go back to where I was. Uh, another thing that you can use this for, for example, is if you want to make adjustments, say just a basic levels adjustment, but you only want to do it on the basic selection of this door here, the marquee tool will give you a selection where you can edit just within those constraints. And control D to make that go away. And there you can see that it has made a nice edit within that section. I'll control Z to undo that. One final thing before I move on to the toolbar at the top here. 
If you lose your selection on accident, and you had just the perfect selection, say if I'm selecting around this thing just how I want it, and I accidentally click off of it, to get back that last selection, Control, Shift, and D, and that'll return you to last selection. Okay, for the toolbar here, it starts out with feather, besides the buttons I already talked about. And by default, it's zero pixels. Now, if I scrub that up to be, say, 25 pixels, it's not actually going to do anything if I already have a selection. But if I've got the number in there and then I select, it'll feather it out on the edges. And what that does, say if I've got my brush tool here and I'm painting along the outside of it, I'll control H to hide it. You can see that it's got a soft edge to it. That's what feathering does. And I'll just leave that at zero for now. Style here, normal, is so you just click and drag as normal. If you click down and go to fixed ratio, you can see I've already got eight and a half by 11. So that'll give me a nice proportion for a printed photograph. And you can change that. You could make it, if you wanted to go wide, just click here and it'll switch them to go 11 by 8.5 for a landscape style photo. And you can change this to anything you want. I could have 15 by 8.5, which isn't a standard size, but that's what it'll give me. This is pretty handy for not only photograph dimensions, but you can also do something like television dimensions. So 16 by 9 for a wide screen, or 4 by 3 for a standard screen, if you're working in that medium. And if you click down to go to fixed size, this will do something similar only in you can do anything from inches or pixels, millimeters, anything you want really. Right now I've got two inches by one inch, but it'll do the actual size that that takes up. Since this is a 300 dpi image, two inches by one inch is pretty small. So if I did say four inch by six inch, it'll give me a much larger and to show you pixels, I'll just do 300 by 300. And if you don't put in IN for inches, it'll automatically default to pixels. So there's a 300 by 300, which is 1 inch by 1 inch. I'm going to go back to normal. And I'll quickly run through the elliptical marquee tool. What this does is any elliptic shape that you want. If you hold down shift it'll do a circle and again alt will come out from the center and shift will do a circle from the center. The uh, shift and alt keys do the same thing as normal. So if I did that you kind of get a face. Now these last two are not used too often. What single row and single column do is it actually selects a single pixel for this one, a uh, single pixel high and it does the entire width of the image and the other one does a single pixel wide and the entire height of the image. What this can actually be useful for is if you're working on web design, if you have a repeating background, what you'll do is you'll just use a single pixel high image and then just repeat that down. This refine edge button I'll cover in a, another tutorial as well as the selection menu after I've actually covered all of the other selection buttons. Well, that wraps up the comprehensive tutorial on the Marquee Tool for Photoshop CS3. Thank you for viewing. Subscribe to my blog at chrislanephoto.com blog to receive updates with new tutorials and more. Cheers!